Hi guys, today I'm going to be harvesting this big, beautiful moon and stars watermelon from the garden. I think this is going to be the biggest moon and stars watermelon I've ever grown. Usually for me, the oblong watermelons end up being the heaviest watermelons, but I think this one's going to be pretty heavy. This is the Klondike Blue Ribbon over here that has actually only been growing for maybe two and a half weeks. It's grown quite a bit since the flower was first pollinated. It's starting a little bit late in the season. Sometimes the watermelons that start growing later in the season will make it for me to maturity and other times the frost gets them before I can harvest them. I think this one's going to make it, but we'll see what happens. I post one or two videos every year talking about how you harvest a ripe watermelon from your garden. I'll put a link to one or two of those videos down in the description and I'll also try to put a couple of them up on the screen so you can click on those if you need to know how to harvest your watermelons. So let's just pull this off of here. There's a Klondike striped blue ribbon hiding just right there below the zinnias. I've been watching it. It's ready too. So we'll go ahead and grab that one. Before we cut these open, I want to weigh this one. I think it's probably at least 25 pounds. This one here is a little guy. We'll weigh it too since I have the scale out here. This one looks so much like a pumpkin. The size of it, the shape of it. You could make a jack-o'-lantern out of this thing. It sits upright without any support. This is a really big round watermelon, at least for me. Get the scale turned on. This is sitting a little bit on a slope, so it might not be completely accurate, but it'll be close enough. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's 27 pounds, 11 ounces. Pretty gigantic. Now we'll weigh the little one. It's probably maybe 10 pounds if I'm lucky. I don't even think it's that big. Okay, so I was wrong. It's 12 pounds, 1.3 ounces. This is my favorite variety, by the way. Um, let's do this one first. I should have probably brought out a second pan, but we'll see what we can do with just this one pan. All right, I'm just gonna see if I can cut a piece out of this. It might split open. I might not be able to do that. All right, now let's take a look at what we got. Oh, I didn't do such a great job cutting it, but it looks good. Let me bring in for a closer view. Let's try a piece. Looks like it might have a little bit of hollowing here in the center. We'll maybe cut that open and take a look. It tastes really good. Might be just slightly overripe, but not too bad. Even though we don't have a ton of room out here, I'm gonna cut this open so I can get a better look at this hollow heart. Hollow heart occurs a lot of times when your melon wasn't fully pollinated. Just be patient with me here for a second. And here we go. Oh, it's not too bad. I thought it had a hollow heart, but it I don't really think it does. It's just the way I cut it, I guess. All right. So let's cut open the next one. Ooh, I think this one is looking nice on the inside. We'll see. And there we go. This one does have a little hollow spot in it. Look at that. It looks really good though. Tastes really good. This variety is so good. I don't think I have found a better one. Congo is pretty good too. But I don't think anything beats this one. Try this one again because I did taste a soft spot in that first bite that I had. Yeah, it's just slightly overripe right here in the center, but all of this is fine. I would still even eat this. It's not bad at all. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.